Okay, Assalamualaikum and very good afternoon everyone. So uh, let's begin our class with normal kitab Al-Fatihah. Okay. So can you see my slide? Yes. Yes, Miss. Okay. Uh. So, uh, as I promised uh, yesterday, okay, I will uh, recap uh, again uh, topic uh, real gases. Okay, so uh, so that maybe for those yang um, kurang faham sikit uh, semalam can um, Okay, lebih faham lah hari ni eh. Okay, so I, I uh, for this recap, I I will not going to explain uh, one by one the slides. Okay, uh, I just get to the important points. Okay, so that um, ada part I think yang you tak perlu pun untuk saya repeat kan. Okay, so uh, for the real gases, okay, I hope you know why this real gases is actually deviate from the ideal behavior. Okay, so we assume that ideal behavior when we are using the uh, equation PV equals to nRT, okay, so we assume that this is ideal because of uh, of these uh, assumptions where a gas has negligible forces where it has no interparticle interaction ataupun no intermolecular forces. Okay and another one assumption yang paling penting is uh, these gas atoms or molecules has a zero volume of gas particles or negligible volume. So that's why uh, uh, for the ideal behavior the volume you just uh, get the volume of the container. Okay and because of these uh, two assumptions that's why you can get the uh, equation just by using PV equals to NRT. However okay so basically um, uh, actually uh, there's no uh, specific uh, gas that have the ideal behavior all the time. Okay so that's why uh, all of this uh, can have the deviation where we can get the real gases occur at high pressure and at low temperature. Okay, so maybe uh, at uh, low pressure you akan nampak that gas behave, actually it also not uh, really ideal, it behave nearly ideal gas. Okay, kita tak sebut dia sangat-sangat ideal, kita sebut nearly, menghampiri ideal. That's why you can use uh, the formula PV equals to NRT. Okay, but when you increase the pressure, okay, now the, uh, it will, uh, you can see that the deviation uh, is become large and large. Okay, and same goes to when you go to the lower temperature. Okay, so under both of these conditions, eh, you dah tak boleh nak neglect the, uh, when we say that, okay, no intermolecular forces and no volume. Now you tak boleh nak uh, make these assumptions anymore. So these assumptions are no longer valid. Okay when we you go for the high pressure and low temperature okay so okay so when you go to the uh, uh, real gases now the equation of course will have some correction so from the pv equals to nrt so this pv will have correction where the p here you will add um some corrections terms here we have n square a over v square and the v here okay we have the v minus n b okay so we add the, this two correction okay where it uh, each of the two correction we have constant a and constant b where constant a a and b yeah okay where constant a is actually relates to the intermolecular forces here relates to IMF, okay, while constant B here is relates to the molecular volume. Where uh, volume T adalah uh, uh, particle uh, volume of the gas lah, okay. And this constants, okay, uh, do not worry, uh, we will give you the value, okay, because uh, each of the gases have their own constants, A and B. Masing-masing ada constant di sendiri lah, okay. So, 
Um, let's say lah. Um, uh, if you got the calculation, okay, benda ni yang you dah buat before this, uh, yesterday for the, uh, I think checkpoint, soalan checkpoint. For example, they ask uh, to calculate the pressure, okay, but here by using the ideal, uh, ideal gas equation and also use the van der Waals equation. Okay, so dua-dua akan bagi jawapan yang berbeza. You will have two different answers. Why? Because of uh, Formula pun dah tak sama. This one is PV equals to nRT. The van der Waals is P plus A and square over V square. Okay, darab dengan V minus and B equals to nRT. So, kat sini perbezaan dia, if you look at this, it depends on the value of A and B. Okay, so let's say if you have P real or by using van der Waals is lesser than P ideal gas, okay, so when you have lower, lower pressure, the most important factor is related to the intermolecular attraction ataupun intermolecular forces. Okay, however, if you have P real higher than the ideal gas pressure, the important factor is basically more to the molecular volume. Okay, bila kita kata important factor more to ataupun uh, ni macam ni kata most important factor, it doesn't mean that uh, dia cuma ada intermolecular attraction saja. No, dia ada dua-dua cuma uh, which one is more um, significant, yang lebih important lah for uh, for that case eh. Sebab kalau uh, uh, daripada graf ni kan macam contoh tadi kita tahu uh, PV over uh, uh, RT bila you dapat straight line okay when it's equals to 1 it is for ideal gun, ideal gas. Dia punya deviation dia boleh lari sama ada ke atas atau ke bawah. Okay ah uh, yang kat sini lah ke atas ke bawah tu it depends on the uh, factor dia sama ada intermolecular attraction or molecular volume. Okay. So for this checkpoint, for example, uh, they can ask you whether uh, let's say dia bagi uh, between AR and CO2, they only just give you the value of A and also the value of B. Okay, when you compare, uh, maybe they can ask you, okay, let, let's say like this question, uh, which one is behave more nearly like ideal? Okay, meaning that Kalau uh, you ada straight line tadi, ideal kita tadi straight line, PVRT is equal to 1, this is ideal. Maknanya let's say lah maybe dia ke bawah lah contoh kan, dia ke bawah. So ada dua. Siapa yang paling hampir, yang inilah behave like ideal lah. Okay, kan? Siapa yang lagi jauh deviation dia, dia lagi uh, lagi banyak correction nak kena buat. So here you can just by simply looking at the value of the constant, but kita tahu constant A and B is actually we call it as correction factor ataupun correction punya constant lah. Okay so meaning that the higher the value of the correction factor meaning that lagi lagi jauh lah dia uh, daripada ideal gas. Maksudnya lagi banyak correction yang dia kena buat to get to this ideal behavior. So bila dia kata nearly like ideal of course you can choose the lowest value of A and B. Okay. So ni tadi lah eh, the smaller the correction. Okay. So now I will explain uh, in details for this part eh. Saya so, rasa yang ni yang ramai student uh, uh, the problem sikit nak faham. Okay. So uh, for the real gas dia banyak melibatkan dia biasanya dua 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 dua. Apa maksud dua kat sini? Masa bila wujudnya real gas ni? Masa bila dia deviate from, when does this real gas deviate from the ideal behavior? When you have, when you account, apa, encounter for uh, with two conditions. Tadi saya baru mention kan, which is high pressure and also low temperature. Kan, ada dua benda. And daripada dua benda ni, apa yang dia um, correct kan, apa yang dia buat correction? Dia buat correction for pressure and volume. Dua benda juga. Betul tak? Dia buat correction for P and V. Kan tadi PV equals to NRT dia buat correction for both P and V. And then apa juga yang dia nak correct actually for P and V? Dia correct for intermolecular forces and also molecular volume. Okay? Dua benda, dua benda kat situ lah. Okay. So first we go for the effect of intermolecular attraction. Let's say we go, kita tahu dia uh, when it goes for P, 
Okay, P, uh, higher P and also lower temperature kan. So for higher P lah, kita pergi yang ni dulu. Okay, kita tengok pula higher P dan kita tengok pula efek yang pertama, intermolecular attraction. Okay, so uh, for the first part here, you tengok point number one. At normal pressure, eh sorry, point number one eh. At normal pressures, the free volume between the gas molecules are so large. Free volume yang mana? Yang kosong ni lah, yang putih ni. Sangat besar, so large that the attraction between molecules are negligible. Sebabkan jarak ni, jarak ni sangat jauh, okay, sangat jauh. So sampai kita boleh abaikan attraction tu. Okay, so that's why the gas behave nearly ideally. Dia tak ada nak ada attraction kat situ lah. That's why based on assumption, uh, uh, ideal gas sebelum ni kan, even dia berjumpa pun, the collision tu adalah elastic. Dia akan bounce balik. Okay, itu based on KMT you dah belajar sebelum ni. Okay. So, ini at normal pressure kan. As you uh, give the higher pressure, so higher pressure here means the external pressure. Dia macam piston kan. So, dalam satu bekas tu asalnya okay, piston tu okay sampai situ je. So, uh, you biar so normal pressure. So, you tekan lagi. Okay, so when you have the uh, external pressure tu, you tambah lagi. So, you get higher pressure. So, P increase eh. What will happen to this volume? Volume will decrease, right? So according to the Boyce law, P increase, so volume kat dalam tu akan decrease. So kita sebenarnya tak nak tengok sangat based on volume, kita nak tengok intermolecular attraction, ya. Yeah? Bila dia decrease, you nampak tak kat sini, now all the particles are close enough. Dia dah jadi rapat. So the uh, the free volume ni dah jadi kurang, kan? Free volume dah kurang and the particles are close enough to interact. So now dia dah boleh ada interaction. Dia dah dekat. Okay. So uh, kat sini eh point number two. Higher pressure external intermolecular distance decreases. Jarak dah makin berkurang. So that's why molecules tend to attract one another. Dia akan try to ada attraction kat situ. So bila kita zoom in kat sini. Okay. So as nearby molecules attract those approaching the container wall. So kita kalau you ingat balik KMT ya, eh, benda ni relate balik dengan KMT you belajar kinetic molecular theory. Yang memberikan pressure dekat dalam tu adalah the one that particles yang melanggar wall of the container kan. Dia langgar pung, dia langgar uh, adalah pressure kat situ kan. Okay. So tapi bila you dah uh, kecikkan volume tu, you bagi external pressure, dalam tu dah ruang tu sempit. So particles are close enough to interact. So let's say lah dia ada interaction dengan, okay contohlah yang ini yang nak langgar dinding ni kan. But then dia ada interaction dengan neighbor dia. So ada interaction. Semua ada interaction. So bila ada interaction, dia akan lower the force of collision with the wall of container untuk yang ini. Because of what? Dia dah melekat kan? So dia, dia jadi agak berat. So dia akan reduce lah kalau ikut uh, point number three here. This will reduce their force of impact on the walls. Thus, the results in decreased gas pressure. So actually, pressure kat dalam ni akan drop. Dia menurun. Daripada, daripada yang mana? Daripada yang kita assume kalau you guna PV NRT. Kan masa kita assume, dia boleh langgar je. So you kira lah berapa pressure dia. Tapi Sebenarnya bila ada interaction, this pressure now akan jadi berkurang. Rendah daripada yang asal. Okay. Yang predicted by the PV equals to NRT lah pada ideal gas law eh. Okay. So this is a effect of intermolecular attraction if you apply for the pressure. External pressure here. Okay. Kita ada juga tadi uh, another condition when you have a lower temperature, right? Still kita pergi pada effect of intermolecular attraction. So here at very low, um, at very low uh, temperature kan? Low temperature, the molecules move very slowly. You still kena ingat this one is gas. Dia masih bergerak sebab dia gas. But uh, you you ingat balik uh, balloon tu lah yang balloon dalam bekas air panas dengan air sejuk tu. But now we go for the low temperature. So dia akan move slowly. So bila dia dah move slowly, kita kat sini kes je kita tak ubah volume. Volume dia sama tapi dia move slowly. So uh, this allows the molecules to be close to each other for a longer time. Sebab dah slow kan? Okay macam saya bagi contoh sebelum ni. Saya selalu terbayang benda ni macam zombie. Cita zombie yang slow tu kan? 
So uh, slowly so akan ada interaction. Dia dah slow. So interaction dia ada lepas tu lama. So bila dah lama, okay dah sempat berkenalan semua tu. So uh, of course dia akan exert an attractive force between them. Okay so bila ada attractive force, of course sama juga isu dia, case dia macam yang ini, this one, this part. Bila ada attractive force, so uh, particle gas, uh, the one that uh, uh, particle gas uh, yang nak langgar wall of container tu akan jadi berkurang force dia because of dia dah ada interaction. So bila dah ada interaction, again the pressure inside uh, the container tu akan jadi Uh, sorry, pressure inside lah of course dia akan jadi berkurang because of you have to include uh, the pressure from the gas. Okay, sebab dia dah jadi ada intermolecular forces kat situ. Dia akan lower the gas pressure. Okay. So ini uh, uh, effect yang pertama kan, intermolecular attraction based on pressure and also based on temperature. Okay, the second effect is molecular volume kan? Okay, so basically sebenarnya uh, effect ni dia bukanlah macam you cerita um, uh, berasingan. Okay, so molecular volume and also intermolecular attraction ni sebenarnya dia berkait. Okay, kita cerita dalam benda yang sama, bekas yang sama tapi a way kita cerita okay intermolecular forces macam mana, molecular volume macam mana. Sebenarnya dia berkait. Okay, again saya tambahlah satu lagi. Sebenarnya gambar yang sama. Okay, sebab kita nak cerita okay at normal pressure for molecular volume. Now kita mention about pressure lah eh. Okay, when you have high pressure. So the space between the molecules again space ni yang kawasan ruang kosong ni or we call it as free volume is enormous or very large okay compared to the volume of the molecules. Kan volume molecule tu sikit je. So maknanya kat sini uh, space tu lagi besar. So therefore the free volume is approximately equal to the container of the volume. That's why uh, normal pressure when you uh, kira PV equals NRT but itulah volume ni you ambil volume of the container. Okay sebab dia kurang. You macam boleh ah, baikkan je lah uh, yang pressure of the gas. Ambil keseluruhan saja. Okay. So However, as the applied pressure increases, applied pressure ni pun samalah, this is the external pressure, okay, increase, okay, so now the free volume decreases sebab kita dah compresskan dia, so free volume kat dalam tu dah berkurang and now the molecular volume which is the volume of the particles makes up a greater proportion of the container volume. So maksudnya kat situ uh, molecular volume, uh, uh, gas particles tu dia dah jadi significant. You dah nampak dah kat situ volume dia. You tak boleh nak abaikan dah sebelum ni sebab volume dia kecil. Sebab volume, free volume tu lagi besar. Now volume dia dah uh, obvious. Sebab volume of the gas tak berubah kan. Yang berubah now is uh, free volume dia yang jadi uh, sikit. Okay. So because of that, okay, effect of molecular volume ni now is very significant and now you dah tak boleh nak um, apa neglect the volume of the particles. Okay. So basically uh, similar as you go for the temperature. Temperature uh, maybe you sama juga you explain on this move very slowly. Okay. So um, yeah, gambar dia okay contoh lah dia move very slowly. Okay contoh dia dah melekat melekat melekat. So volume ni dia asalkan dia satu-satu jauh-jauh-jauh. Tapi bila dia melekat 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 you boleh nampak dia dalam satu group of gases. Sebab dia dah melekat kan. So dia dah ada attraction kat situ. So that's why uh, the molecular volume pun dah jadi significant. You dah tak boleh abaikan uh, nak neglect the uh, that volume of particles. Okay. Sebab uh, explanation tu tak ada dekat dalam slide ni. Tapi macam tu lah lebih kurang explanation dia. Okay. So I hope uh, you boleh faham lah eh, kenapa dia deviate uh, daripada uh, apa ideal behavior and apa condition dia and apa effect dia sebenarnya apa yang berlaku kat situ. Okay so uh, ni yang tadi um, saya tunjuk ada satu yang graph tu when you have P real lower than P ideal or P real higher than P ideal when you compare calculation between ideal gas and weather walls of course jawapan dia takkan sama by using for example here 
by using ideal gas you dapat uh, this pressure but by using van der Waals you dapat lower. So here kita buat conclusion here real is lower than uh, ideal kan. So apa yang signifikan kat sini yang signifikan adalah intermolecular forces. Okay. So habis lah pasal uh, real gas <coughs> Okay, so jap eh. So kita akan masuk pada liquid pula. Okay, basically uh, liquid ni adalah the last subtopic. Okay. <coughs> so um, uh, apa ya saya nak explain. Okay. Before this you belajar gas. Gas ni kan dia gas lah. Dia akan bergerak uh, secara uh, rawak kan and random. So dia akan langgar aja dinding bekas. Liquid ni sama juga sebenarnya dia akan bergerak juga betul tak? Dia masih boleh bergerak. Dia tak macam solid. Solid dia akan very packed, orderly packed dekat dalam tempat dia. But liquid dia masih boleh bergerak tapi dia tak uh, as free as uh, gas lah. Okay. So saya mention about bergerak-bergerak ni sebab apa? Sebab kita akan also uh, calculate on the vapor pressure. Okay saya akan explain later lah. Okay ada juga kita nak tengok this pergerakan and this uh, topic of liquid basically hmm, kalau ikut kan more on calculation. Okay tapi calculation dia you, you bukan macam simple calculation yang macam ala hafal je lah formula you boleh kira. No. This calculation liquid you kena faham on which uh, uh, apa formula yang you kena apply untuk kira. So that's why I hope um, you boleh stay focus uh, on what I will explain to you. Cuma hari ni saya takkan dapat explain banyak lah sebab kita one hour je. Okay so um, maybe next week kan bila kita continue I hope you akan um, can focus lah on the liquid uh, part. And basically sebenarnya liquid sebenarnya panjang uh, chapter dia tapi I notice um, banyak juga yang dah berkurang uh, because uh, two years back I think uh, uh, slide uh, sebab actually two years back saya yang buat slide on this uh, topic banyak jugalah slide yang saya buat tu dah dah tak ada. Saya, saya cerita two years back because saya um, two years uh, saya cuti so saya tak mengajar. So bila saya compare dengan two years uh, previously uh, point a few points maybe nak relatekan balik dengan uh, maybe because of the time I'm not sure. Okay so I hope uh, bila dia cut banyak you tak ada macam sebab saya perasan bila cut banyak kita nak explain tu susah sebab banyak jam jam jam. Okay because kita sentuh more on surface saja. So uh, that's why uh, for this topic ada a few yang saya sebenarnya uh, tambah slide saya balik supaya so that um, awak boleh faham um, absorb dulu okay apa benda yang saya nak explain and then baru kita pergi pada apa yang you betul-betul kena belajar. Okay so at the end of this uh, subtopic eh basically you should be able to explain the colligative properties. So what are colligative properties? Saya akan explain lah later. And basically this one is uh, effect of the number of solid particles and then state the Routes law. Okay kita ada lagi law yang baru. Okay we call it uh, Routes law but now it's in liquid lah. You jangan to confuse dengan uh, law yang dalam gas eh. And then you uh, need to use this one to calculate the vapor pressure lowering. Okay this is one term you have to know. And then calculate the composition vapor over solution of a volatile solute and solvent. So banyak terms yang macam apa benda ni, apa benda ni. Ah, saya akan explain lah uh, that one later eh. And then calculate the boiling point elevation or freezing point depression. So nampak tak eh. Terms dia eh? dia macam biasa dengar boiling point, biasa dengar freezing point. Tapi uh, what is the meaning by boiling point elevation? What is the meaning by freezing point depression? Actually elevation, elevate lah. Elevator kan naik. Freezing point depression is depressed. Kita turun eh. Bukan depression, depresi eh. <laughs> depressed. And vapor pressure lowering is also lower. Okay tapi apa maksud tu? So that's why you kena faham dulu maksud tu baru you boleh pergi pada calculation. Kalau you perasan semua benda calculate. Tapi kalau you tak faham uh, benda tu you tak you tak boleh nak calculate kan. 
Okay, so of course the last part is calculate the molecular weight. Actually, is this one is based on the boiling point and also freezing point depression ni. Basically, uh, macam you buat uh, calculate molar mass daripada PVNRT. Uh, dia boleh play around lah, application lah. Okay. So, um, before uh, we go, okay, what are the colligative properties? So, these uh, colligative properties are actually uh, related to the number of particles dissolved in the so solution. Bila kita mention about number of particles. So, basically, kita relate dengan um, amount, amount eh. Okay. So, uh, example ni lah tadi yang kita ada bagi tahu tadi vapor pressure lowering, boiling point elevation, freezing point depression. Sebenarnya ada banyak lagi. Osmotic pressure, ada lagi apa lah saya pun lupa. Uh, okay, tapi untuk you all punya um, uh, level kita belajar up until this tree lah. Okay, so before kita pergi in details of the colligative properties and kita pergi one by one. Kita akan pergi satu-satu ni, satu, dua, tiga point ni. Okay. So that's why uh, ada, ada tiga dia kan. So three colligative properties that, that you need to consider ada tiga ni. Sebelum kita pergi yang tiga-tiga ni. Okay of course saya akan start dulu dengan uh, my own uh, explanation for you. That's why dalam ni tak ada dalam you punya slide. Tapi saya baru bagi tadi dekat dalam uh, group class rep. So for those yang nak boleh ambil lah. Uh, saya dah bagi dalam bentuk PDF. Okay. So kita nak pergi, kita nak cerita, okay before kita pergi, kita akan pergi kat sini dulu eh. First, this is the first point yang saya akan explain. Second, third. Okay, so what does the meaning by vapor pressure lowering? Macam complex sangat nama dia. Lepas tu tiba Raoult's law. Ha, basically, you, you can calculate this using Raoult's law. Okay, sebelum kita pergi details tu, saya pergi dululah pada introduction dia. What does the meaning by vaporization? Or sometimes we call it as evaporation. Okay. Basically, vaporize, uh, vapor lah. Tahu tak? Evaporation. Evaporate. Bahasa Melayu dia apa? Meruap. Okay. This is actually a process in which liquid particles with enough energy or sufficient energy that escape from the liquid surface and form a gas. So, apa beza vaporization dengan uh, let's say saya boil? Boiling. Boiling pun liquid kan, liquid dalam ni, you panaskan, let's say water up to 100 degree Celsius, you will get gas. Betul tak? Daripada liquid jadi gas. But what, uh, what's uh, the difference? The Ataupun the main difference lah between boiling and vaporization. Explanation dia ada kat sini lah. For vaporization, evaporation, okay, it's actually also liquid particles but they escape from a surface sahaja. Liquid surface. So kalau boil, semua yang ada dekat dalam ni, dia panas kan? So semua dalam ni 100 degree Celsius, dia akan naik menjadi gas. But for evaporation, dia cuma pada surface sahaja. Because of what? Because of kita tak ada sampai reach 100 degree Celsius. Kita as long as uh, you got uh, enough energy, energy tu temperature lah kan. Then maybe macam you letak je kat luar ke atau letak dalam bilik pun kan. Lama-lama dia boleh vaporize kan. Uh, air tumpah kan kat lantai. You biar lama-lama dia kering. Ah uh, Itu idea actually that one is concept vaporization right. Okay dia kita tak ada pun temperature up to 100 degree Celsius. Okay so sebenarnya konsep dia yang berlaku is actually liquid surface tu yang escape menjadi gas. Okay so the molecules in the interior, interior tu yang kat dalam lah yang kat dalam okay are held by the intermolecular forces from neighboring molecules in all direction. Meaning that here dekat the uh, air kat dalam tu uh, kita sebenarnya adalah uh, held by intermolecular forces. Okay benda ni Macam saya cakap, ni tak boleh lari daripada chapter 3. Contoh water lah, water molecules kan. Dalam tu dia held by apa? Hydrogen bond. Okay. So liquid lain depends lah. Kalau dia polar uh, polar liquid, so dia akan held by the dipole dipole forces. Kalau dia non polar, dia akan held by the uh, London dispersion forces. While molecules at the surface, okay, of a liquid, also held by the intermolecular forces but it, this one is from other surface molecules and by molecules below them. So 
apa beza dua ni sebenarnya? Okay, basically inilah gambar dia yang saya nak tunjuk. Kalau air tu kan, kita tengok, kalau dekat dalam, this one is interior lah kita panggil yang belah dalam, ada intermolecular attraction from all direction. Semua direction tu akan ada, dia akan form interaction kat situ kan? Okay, so bila dia form interaction, akan ada intermolecular forces lah. For example, water tadi kita ada hydrogen bond. However, for uh, at the surface, surface ni kan paling atas kan? So, molecule yang paling atas, okay, this is uh, we consider as surface yang uh, he, uh, apa, uh, health uh, intermolecular forces dia adalah cuma from left and also left, right and also from below. Okay, kalau yang lain dia from all direction. So, you faham eh? Maksudnya kalau you tengok kat sini, you rasa mana yang paling kuat? Of course yang belah dalam sebab attraction dia lagi banyak. Okay, so that's why this one as long as you get uh, enough energy. Okay, energy tu cukup, okay, enough. So, uh, dia boleh putuskan all of this attraction and dia akan naik ke atas menjadi gas. Okay, of course yang ini akan naik dulu sebab dia paling atas. Bila atas ni dah habis, uh, second layer akan pergi and then third layer. Of course yang kat dalam ni dia tak akan naik. Sebab tu kalau you just air, air apa yang you biar kat lantai tu, dia kering tu, akan ambil masa. Kan as you compact dengan you boil, you maintain the temperature as 100 degrees Celsius. Kalau itu, semua yang bawah-bawah ni pun akan naik kat atas jadi gas. Okay. So that's why dia kata kat sini, the molecules at the surface experience less attractive forces than those in the interior. Okay, that's why dia lagi mudah untuk menjadi gas. Okay, so molecules in a liquid are constantly moving and colliding with one another. Remember, this is liquid, dia masih boleh bergerak. Dia tak, dia bukan solid eh, dia, masih, dia liquid. So that's why dia masih boleh bergerak. So when the surface molecules gain sufficient energy to overcome the intermolecular forces, so as I mentioned tadi, kalau enough energy cukup untuk dia putuskan kan, so dia nak putuskan... Dia nak putuskan ni. Ha, kalau dia cukup energy, dia nak putuskan. Okay. So vaporization or we call it as evaporation will occur. Okay. So this vaporization we call it as endothermic process. Okay. So when the surface molecules vaporize with high kinetic energy, the average kinetic energy of the remaining molecules decreases. Maksudnya kat sini dia dah naik. Okay. Dia kuat lah nak naik. So yang kat bawah ni kinetic energy dia akan makin berkurang, remaining eh. Okay. So thus evaporation reduces the temperature. Okay. Sorry. So bila dia naik lama-lama kat bawah ni berkurang so of course temperature pun makin berkurang. Okay. So the rate of evaporation increases when the surface area of liquid increases. Of course you nak compare yang satu kawasan yang rat, yang rap, lapang, tumpah air dengan satu yang uh, sikit tapi uh, maybe banyak. Maybe tempat tu bertakung ke kan. So akan banyak kan. So surface area tu yang nipis tu akan lebih cepat lah. And then the temperature of course lagi tinggi temperature. Rate of evaporation also will increase. And then when we uh, decrease the external pressure. Kita buang segala pressure tu. Kita nak buang pressure by apa? By having uh, extra daripada luar. External. Kita sama ada kita blow kan dia. Kita tiup ataupun by using fan. So of course dia akan jadi lagi cepat lah. Okay. So tadi concept is uh, for evaporation kan. So bila kita ada evaporation we can also have the condensation. So what does the meaning by condensation? This is the process by which the vapor okay. So air ni saya lupa nak mention tadi. Kalau air dia jadi gas kita uh, uh, bukan air sajalah liquid eh. Any liquid yang jadi gas we are not uh, mention it as gas kita mention it as vapor. Okay, specific term. Kita panggil dia vapor. Okay, sebab tu kalau awak ingat lagi awak belajar Dalton's law before this. Collecting gas over water. Collecting gas over water sama. Gas tu you collect, bekas tu tertutup. So you collect tu sebenarnya adalah P total kan. P total is equals to P gas yang awak nak collect plus P. Water ni kita panggil apa? Vapor pressure. Maksudnya pressure of vapor. Vapor apa? Vapor gas. 
And vapor gas pula. Vapor of water. Vapor tu adalah gas lah sebenarnya. Okay. So kalau liquid, vapor, a gas yang jadi gas tu kita panggil dia vapor lah eh. Okay. So I repeat uh, here. Condensation. This is the process by which the vapor molecules reform a liquid. Meaning that, okay. Saya tunjuk contoh lah. Okay. Kita selalu tunjuk contoh uh, botol air. Paling senang. Okay, so uh, kita assume condensation ni, uh, first of course evaporation. Dia akan start dengan evaporation dulu. So air ni kalau you perasan biasanya kan you minum air, you tinggal, you biar lama dalam bilik yang tak buka ekipas ke apa, akan ada titik-titik uh, air dekat dalam tu. Biasa kita panggil bahasa-bahasa dia apa? Uh, botol tu berpeluh kan? Okay, so that one is actually the process of condensation, right? Bila uh, first uh, air daripada surface tu tadi, dia naik ke atas, dia evaporate, dia menjadi vapor, gas. Okay, so that vapor lama-lama dia boleh patah balik menjadi air, reform as a liquid. Okay, so apa macam mana sebenarnya dia berlaku? So as the surrounding temperature decreases, Okay, bila kat luar, kan makin lama dia makin, uh, temperature makin menurun kan. So, the uh, the vapor molecules which uh, asalnya dia move with high speed begin to reduce their speed. Okay, start to, dia di slow. Asalnya okay, dia naik jadi gas. Tapi lama-lama menyebabkan temperature surrounding dia decrease. Dalam masa yang sama, speed tu akan reduce. So, on further cooling, the molecules are moving so slowly and they attract one another. So, dia nak naik so lama-lama makin lama makin slow makin slow So lama-lama dia ada attraction juga Intermolecular forces kan They attract one another gas-gas tu And begin to condense So they attract, attract oh, water, attract dengan water Lama-lama ada attraction So they begins to form liquid So dia nak liquefy balik lah dia jadi liquid Okay so this condensation basically is the reverse of vaporization And this is an exothermic process. Dia terbalik lah daripada vaporization tadi eh. Okay, so I hope you clear eh, uh, with the condensation and uh, vaporization. So that's why uh, before kita pergi pada vapor pressure lowering tadi, uh, ni terms yang kita akan selalu pakai lepas ni. So what does the meaning by vapor pressure? Ataupun ada juga kita use this term, saturated vapor pressure. Apa maksud dia? Okay, macam saya cakap tadi, vapor pressure sama lah sebenarnya maksud dia pressure of the gas. Okay, cuma vapor ni kita spesifik untuk liquid yang menjadi gas. Okay, macam before this hydrogen, nitrogen itu memang obviously they are gas. Gases kan. So now uh, vapor ni is from liquid become gas. So we call it as vapor. So vapor pressure, pressure untuk gas uh, yang daripada liquid tu lah. Okay. So here eh. A liquid evaporates in a closed container. Tadi eh macam yang dalam uh, bekas air tu. Okay. They evaporate. So the vapor pressure in the space above the liquid increases. So here you have to imagine. Okay. Contoh eh. Saya lukis kat sini. Ke ship tak apalah eh. Dalam bekas yang tu tutup eh. So you ada water kan. So dia akan evaporate tu tak? Ruang yang kosong ni, space yang kosong ni kat situlah gas tu akan berada. The vapor. Okay. So this uh, ruang tu akan wujudnya pressure. Sebab as long as ada gas akan ada pressure right? Okay. So that's why uh, you can get the vapor pressure above this uh, liquid. Okay. So, some of the molecules in the vapor re-enter the liquid via condensation. Ni yang tadi saya explain lah. Okay. As the vapor pressure rises, so uh, dia naik je. So, the rate of condensation also increases. Okay. Of course, asal dia kita vaporize dulu. Lama-lama dia akan start to condense kan. Dia melekat. Dia akan start ada interaction, start to condense. So, dia naik lagi. So, lama-lama the rate uh, of condensation pun increase. Until we reach a state of dynamic equilibrium. Maksudnya kadar rate uh, evaporate sama dengan kadar rate of condensation. Okay. And, ni, at which the rate of evaporation is equal to the rate of condensation. Ini kita panggil dynamic equilibrium. Dia dalam kadar equilibrium tu itulah equal. Rate uh, rate pergi dengan rate turun sama. Rate naik dengan rate turun. Rate evaporate dengan rate condense sama. 
Okay, so at this uh, at this equilibrium, the vapor pressure will assume a constant value. Okay, asalnya naik je kan, evaporate. Sampai satu tahap, dia akan constant lah. Sebab rate evaporate dengan rate uh, condensed tu tadi sama. So, dia constant. This one is called as saturated vapor pressure. This one. Dia dah tepu dah, saturated. So maksudnya uh, you you buatlah macam mana pun dia punya rate dia dah sama. Dah tepu lah. Uh, tu maksud dia saturated eh. <coughs> so <coughs> this vapor pressure of pure liquid, a liquid ni lah eh, uh, is actually depends on the intermolecular forces and also temperature. Okay. So maksudnya intermolecular forces tadi kan yang 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 pegang dia and also temperature lah of course kalau temperature tinggi uh, makin banyak lah dia jadi gas kan so vapor pressure dia akan berubah okay so if you look uh, at this okay initially no molecules of the liquid are in the uh, gas phase asalnya tak ada kita masukkan liquid etanol okay so sampai satu tahap at equilibrium okay okay dia akan naik lah uh, evaporate kan dalam masa sama nanti later bila dah banyak kat sini so dia akan turun pula dia condense. Okay. By equilibrium sampai satu tahap the red molecules leave the surface. Okay. Leave the surface ni maksudnya dia red naik ke atas uh, equals to the rate at which gas molecules return to liquid phase. Equals untuk dia patah balik jadi liquid. Okay. So this equal rates produce stable vapor pressure that does not change as long as the temperature remain constant. You ubah temperature of course dia akan berubah. Okay. So ni tadilah yang saya explain dia kan. First dia naik okay sampai satu tahap uh, dia akan condense okay sampailah satu tahap lagi molecules enter and leave the liquid are at the same. Allah sorry. Are at the same rate. Okay macam kalau you plot the graph first dia akan naik okay sebab kita tahu rate vaporize asalnya akan lebih tinggi pada condensation. Sebab dia akan vaporize dulu kan. Sampai satu tahap rate condensation ni sebab temperature makin lama makin turun so condensation ni akan makin banyak sampai lah satu tahap sama kadar dia. So rate tu kadar kan. So kadar dia sama so dia akan dapat straight line. So dia dapat straight line rate vaporization is equal to rate condensation. Dia achieve equilibrium lah. Okay. So far okay tak? Clear tak? Ni just uh, intro je sebab benda ni memang tak ada dalam set you. Intro sebab saya nak lepas ni bila saya mention vapor pressure awak faham. Oh vapor pressure tu maksudnya apa? Pressure of the gas tapi yang datang daripada liquid. Okay. Vapor lah gas kan. Uh, lepas tu macam let's say saya mention about you you faham actually sebenarnya vapor pressure tu wujudnya uh, masa bila wujudnya vapor pressure? Apa maksud um, space above the liquid? Ah perkataan ni nanti later you akan jumpa banyak. Space above the liquid apa maksud dia? Ah maksudnya macam yang dalam botol air ni, ah ruang kosong tu lah. Tempat kat mana gas tu nak berada. Gas tu apa? Vapor. So daripada situ ruang kosong tu lah yang kita akan collect pressure dia. Okay. Benda-benda ni you akan belajar lepas ni dalam uh, ni, Routes Law. Okay. Tapi saya tak kerja sekarang lah. Ini pun dah habis masa kan. Okay. So far any question you want to ask? Ada apa-apa nak tanya tak? <coughs> uh, saya saya tak ada lah eh. I hope sebab benda tu introduction je and then I think you dah familiar sebenarnya vaporization and condensation. It just that benda tu you nak relatekan dengan uh, in the scientific way how to explain kan and then how to relate with the vapor pressure. Okay. So um, I hope uh, class rep dah bagilah uh, dah distribute ya yeah, the notes. Uh, sebab saya baru bagi tadi pun okay so kalau tak ada apa with that I end our session today with uh, Tasbih Kafaro and Suratul Ansar